Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and cast time once again. Um, and let me go ahead and preface this by saying that uh, I'm kind of half asleep doing this. Just, I've been fighting the urge to sleep all evening and probably all night. I'm trying to avoid making the same mistake I did this morning, where uh, it was like 2 a.m. I thought I'd lay down for a one-hour nap, but I ended up oversleeping like an hour and a half. So, I mean... Part of that was due to my sinuses fucking up on me. Like, I had a problem with it all morning. Like, something in the weather outside, but it just, all of a sudden, it started up. But, still, um, again, I, again, I'm trying to avoid oversleeping. So, so, once again, I'm, I'm not the most widest awake when doing this cast. So, but, uh, aside from that, um, what you're seeing here is going to be a continuation from yesterday's video. Um, this is going to be uh, a nature hike throughout the Toronto Islands. Um, and for those that are curious, uh, there is uh, one of my favorite channels, Not Just Bikes. The, his new video that came out was like the, it's like the only car-free area in all of Canada. And so he decided to cover that. So thought it was a cool video. Decided to go ahead and... Um, I think I typed down Toronto Island Nature Hike or something like that, and this came up. So, again, what you're looking at here is going to be part two. Oh, and I think um the, the beginning part of this video that you're seeing now was uh was what was showing towards the tail end of the previous video. So, there's a little bit of overlap here. Oh, and um also. I am having a bit of a technical problem with this. Um, I can't click. I can't click anything here on the bottom. I can't click the volume or anything like that. I gotta do it with hotkeys. So. And as I forgot to do a sound test earlier, or I forgot to sound check this before the video started, uh, I'm gonna have to kind of check it on the fly. But so far, it looks like the level is okay. And again, there are, there are going to be um, there are going to be visuals on here, but I'm going to try to keep them to a bare minimum. I mean, I don't want to ruin the awesomeness of nature. So, um, but to start with, I uh, did my usual pinball stream yesterday, um, and I, yeah, and, and yeah, I was phenomenal. Just kicked major butt on, F, especially on Pinball FX3. Yeah, I was just, I was awesome on there. Um, I actually, uh, I actually took first place in a few tournaments, but, and but um, I did pretty good on all the other tournaments I entered. Um, the new, um, I think the new matchup. Um, I'll probably need to explain this a little bit, but um, the matchup mode on FX3. It, kind of works the same way tournaments do um it's uh you're only given three minutes on a table but on the last uh on the last 30 seconds of that table you have double scoring so and you can yeah there's like there's various buffs and whatnot that you could use various uh i don't for lack of a better word cooldowns but uh you know like double scoring um you can rewind time. You can you can slow down time. That kind of thing. So you know you can longer ball saves, um, longer combo times, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can use any kind any of these buffs for uh, for matchup mode. And um, but anyway, uh, for this week for the weekly matchup, I actually did pretty good, and I. I'm almost good enough to advance to the next league. Um, there's um, there's there's bronze league, there's silver, there's gold, uh, platinum. I think there's also diamond league. So I'm I'm currently in a uh, silver league. So oh, and uh, within these uh, leagues, there's tier there's three tiers. You know there's tier three bronze, tier two, tier one, etc. Um, same with all the other colors. I'm in, uh, I'm at silver three right now, so. 
But yeah, like I said, um, in FX3, I'm getting pretty close to... I think I'm getting close to being able to advance to the next league, and I gotta do one more thing here. Okay, almost done. Oh, what the hell? It froze up. Here, let me... Let me back it up a bit. Okay. Uh, some of this kind of looks a little familiar. So, anyway, um... But yeah, um, FX3 overall, I was I was awesome. Pinball Arcade, however, um, right from the outset, you suck. Ass. Yeah, I was horrible. Just the first two tables, uh, Twilight Zone and Adam's Family, I couldn't do diddly squat on. Um, I was I was starting to consider just bailing out of the session before I get too pissed off. Uh, plus, uh, fatigue was starting to rear its ugly head. Just, again, because I forgot to mention that, uh... No, wait, I did mention earlier. Um, all this morning, I was having sinus problems, so it was very hard for me to sleep. And for the, for the short periods of time that I was actually able to sleep, it was all dream and nightmare filled. So, so already about this time, I was starting to... So, but luckily, um, one of my longest standing re regulars, uh, he's known me for about five years, Guitaro87. I think he was, uh, he was thinking quick, he was thinking quickly enough to request another table, um, Elvira Scared Stiff. It's one of the tables that I'm actually good at, and, uh, there is a chance I might be skipping this. Don't do it, buddy. Don't stand behind them. You look like a creepy stalker when you do that. I mean, nothing against you personally. It just, it's, I'm looking at, I mean, I'm going by what I see here. Okay, he's going around. All right. And I also forgot to mention, too, that, um, hang on, let me pause it. Um, like yesterday, this is going to be both a cast and a commentary. Like, part cast, I mean, talking about my day, but it's also going to be commentary. I'll be doing some commentary on the, uh, on the nature hike here. So, anyway... Um, but like I said, Pinball Arcade, um, I started off terribly, but luckily, Kitaro87, uh, requested Elvira Scared Stiff. Um, one of the, one of the, one of the tables that I can consistently do well on. So, he did that, did good on the table, I think I lasted like 15, 20 minutes on it. Um, the table after that, um, uh, Black Hole, just, I think I did okay on but anyway, uh, just since I couldn't make any real headway on Pinball Arcade, I switched on over to Zachariah Pinball, where, where also like yesterday, I actually did better on Zachariah Pinball than I did on uh, on Pinball Arcade. Usually it's the other way around. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, this is um. I remember watching another video about this. Um, this area here, this is one of the very few restaurants that's on this island. I think there's only like one or two. And then there's like maybe uh, one tavern or one one bar and grill and that's it. That's all there is on this island. Like there's no there's no grocery stores, there's no convenience stores or anything. So your plating skills get put to the test here. I mean there is a I mean like yes I mean as you probably saw yesterday there is a ferry that goes from the island to the mainland, so 
if you gotta buy some groceries, you're gonna have to pay like eight bucks to get on the ferry and, you know, buy what you need and come on back. So I think it's a $16 round trip. So like I said, you, your planning skills get put to the test here. So, but otherwise, like I was saying, um, Zachariah Pinball, I did a, I did what's called story mode, where you start from the very, very, very first table that Zachariah made, um, and you have to complete an objective on there, and then once you do that, you go right on to the next table, and you just keep doing that over and over, and you have a limited amount of balls and time to do this with. Oh, I'm uh, taking a drink of Arizona green tea. Hold on. Did that, did pretty good. Like I said, overall, um, I did better on Zachariah Pinball than I did on uh, Pinball Arcade, so. That's the kind of night it was. And then, um, after the stream, um, worked on my blog a little bit, and then, like yesterday, I decided to fire up some Final Fantasy XIV, and um, I did some, um, I did some PvP. Um, I did two different kinds. There is a, uh, there's one called Frontline, where uh, where you're you play in one of three factions, all of them just you know trying to get control of territory, trying to control certain checkpoints and whatnot, you know stuff like that. Um, it's for those that do uh, first person shooters. This is probably all too familiar to you. You know you got to capture and hold territory, that kind of thing. Um, I did that. I also did another another mode I don't recall ever seeing before called Rival Wings. It kind of strikes me as a uh, League of Legends. Yeah, I, you know, little little soldiers will start off from your home base and they head to they'll attack various uh, various towers. It's just kind of hard to explain, but if you play League of Legends. That's pretty much how Rival Wings works. So, try that. I was, I was pretty much a lost man in a lost world in that mode. Like I said, I don't recall ever doing that mode before. So, but um, chances are, I probably won't do it uh, tomorrow because my work week will have started up. But maybe on my next days off, I might do this again. But I don't, I don't see me streaming it, because Final Fantasy XIV, despite me streaming that game for about five years, for the most part, it's pretty much a ghost town. I don't, I mean, I don't get near the amount of people on, on fourteen that I do on pinball, which is also, like I said yesterday, possibly the day before, is also one of the reasons why I'm streaming pinball these days. More people show up, so. That just motivates me to play more and play better. So. I kind of want, I kind of want this guy to go more in country, and not just um, walking over here checking out all the boats, cause we're, we're starting to venture into creepy territory. I'm guess. Let me let me pause it real quick. I'm guessing that. Um, because I think I'm under the impression that Toronto Islands here is basically a one big tourist trap. Because otherwise, you know, I figure a lot of these people here would probably would have like looked over at this guy with his camera stick out, oh, turn his head, and, oh, get away from me, that kind of thing. But no, they don't. They don't seem to mind. So they probably just think of him as just some other tourist. So. Yeah, he, at least he's turning. At least he's turning on, turning and walking away. So. Um. But otherwise, um, after that, um, I was I was actually in kind of a rugby mood. Uh, plus, uh, on top of that, though, too. Again, I'm trying to. I'm basically half asleep here. I'm trying to find ways to stay awake well I'm just in kind of a rugby mood you know 
rugby, you know, it's my all-time favorite sport. It's, you know, it's action-packed as well, so give me something to watch, you know. You know, help, you know, help keep me awake. So, and I, don't, I just, I think I typed down rugby 2022, just some current stuff, and, oh, women's rugby came up. I totally forgot they have a women's version of this, but I'm uh, taking, another, taking another drink. But yeah, I'm um, watching that. Um, good stuff. And um, one thing I did notice, one thing I did notice that uh, for the national anthems, they're all singing for them. They're actually singing the national anthem, like all the players. Which I, you know, I don't, for lack of a better word, to me, um, uh, players singing the national anthem should be mandatory. I mean, I mean, no, no, I'm talking like if you're, if this is the international stage, you're on the world stage here, um, to me, you should be singing the national anthem. Now, I kind of, I kind of lost my train of thought here, but, but I've seen my, um, I've seen my fair share of, um, rugby matches where a lot of these players, it's just, you know, like they're just like, you know, half-hearted, you know, half-ass, like, you know, it's, you know, it's just a formality, you know, they, like a necessary evil form or something, you know, like, no, no. I mean, if you're on the world stage, you know, you're presenting yourself out to the rest of the planet. I mean, you should be loud and proud when it comes to your national anthem. Now, now, don't get me wrong here. I mean, it's, you don't have, you know, you don't have to be in denial when you're up there singing like, our country is great. No. I mean, you can be as much of a rebel as you want, you know, on your, you know, on your national stage, you know, your, lo you know, in your own country. I mean, you can be, you know, you can be as much of a rebel as you want. I mean, I know I am. I love me some George Carlin, uh, Bill Hicks, uh, Doug Stanhope. You know, I love me some rabble rousing. You know, um, um, one of my favorite YouTube channels, Second Thought. Um, one of my, one of my favorite authors, Jessica Wildfire. You know, so I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty big rebel. Robert Reich. I totally forgot about him. You know. I mean, I'm, I'm as, as ignorant as it might sound, this is kind of before my time, but Colin Kaepernick taking a knee during the uh, football games. I don't, I don't follow current events that much. I don't follow pop culture stuff. So, but I mean, Colin Kaepernick taking a knee during one of those football games, I was to totally down with that. And hell, that's one beauty of this country. You can do that. You know, free speech and all that. It ain't like some other countries where you, you take a knee during a football game, you're probably going to get assassinated shortly after. You know, some of those other despotic, tyrannical places. I mean, you show dissension, you know, subjected to a firing squad. Oh, you can, not, you know, at least in this country, you can, you know, you can do that kind of thing. But anyway, um, kind of going off the subject here, we, you know, you know, and then um, England, England comes to mind, you know, and I'm sure uh, a country like England has their own healthy share of problems, just like us. But yet, I'm, you know, some of the um, some of the rugby matches I've watched over the years with uh, with England. I mean, they're I mean they're into it. I mean, just glorious, happy and glorious. I mean, some of them are even crying while doing it, like tears streaming down their face and everything. You know, they got some passion for their country, but like I said, I'm pretty sure uh, I'm pretty sure England's as much of a political and cultural clusterfuck as much as we are. You know, but yet they're loud and proud. You know, so I'm pretty sure those those English rugby players, you know, once they're back in their home country of England, they're probably they're probably bitching as much about their they're probably bitching as much about their politics as we are about ours. 
Ja. You know, so I mean, so it's kind of a recap. I mean, if you're if you're on a if you're on a sports team and if you're on the if you're on the world stage, sing that national anthem. Don't just sit there. You know, or hell, some some of those guys they don't even say anything. Oh, and uh, and one other thing I do need to say about this: the only time where I'd probably give I'd probably give you a pass is um, I think a uh, a country like Georgia. I I remember reading about this uh, some odd years ago. They're a. Uh, it was like a brand new rugby team. They had, you know, their country had has no concept of rugby whatsoever. So, again, it was, it was, it was newly introduced to the country. So, none of the Georgians had any clue how to play it or anything. So, because of that, they um they actually imported a lot of their a lot of their team from New Zealand and other countries. So, in something like that. If, if say Georgia was not your country of origin, you know, if you're not a native of that place, then yeah, I'd be totally fine with you not singing their national anthem. Um, same with our, same with my country, United States. Um, a good chunk of our rugby teams here, they come from New Zealand. So something like that, I'd be totally cool with you not singing the national anthem because you weren't born and raised here. So I, you know, I'm totally down, totally cool with it. So, but yeah, it, it it just occurred to me too. So I mean, a lot of, a lot of team, a lot of teams out there. Like for example, Romania, just to toss a name out there. Not everybody on the, not everybody on a team, are is going to be Romanians. You know, you're probably going to get them from Kazakhstan and Mongolia and all them. I mean, you know, so if you're if you got foreigners on your team. It's don't hold it against them if they don't sing your national anthem. So, but again, otherwise, um, <laughs> I kind of kind of veered off the path here. I, w I was wanting to talk about national anthems a little bit. I wasn't expecting to go this in depth in it though. Um, but otherwise, as for the uh, rugby match, I'm about about halfway through it. Good stuff. Um, it's it's it, it's almost like a it's it's almost like watching men's rugby. You, there's hardly any difference. You know, there there's still some hard hitting tackles, and they're you know they're not they're not that you know they're not that gentle. I mean, you know, despite you know you know despite them being women and all that, so it's some pretty it's still some pretty good stuff to watch. I mean, I I kept th I kept thinking that the whole match they're gonna be they're gonna be more caring for lack of a better word but no they're you know they're still you know again they're still doing some hard hits and you know they're still collapsing scrums and all that so well, so far I'm liking this and so far I haven't seen a single car except maybe uh the occasional golf cart here and there, but seeing a fair amount of those, though, those uh, those four-wheel, two-man bicycles or whatever they're called. Um, and I guess one other thing I wanted to mention, um, for those that don't know me, um, I basically have a junk food addiction. Um, I've had it for many years. It's something that I've been trying to shake off from time to time, but it ultimately it gets the better of me, mostly because in my environment, I'm surrounded by it. So kind of like what a, what a heroin junkie from the streets would have to go through. I mean, you can't. It's kind of hard to quit. It's kind of hard to quit heroin when you're surrounded by it. You know, when, you know, it's in your environment. But anyway, so 
earlier today, I just had a, I just had a hankering to go out and get get a few um, it's my all-time favorite kind of junk food, old-fashioned chocolate donuts, and then um, I also want to get some pasta salad too to go along with it. Um, so I guess uh, I was a little proud of myself. Um, I went down there, bought it, but luckily, um. I got across the parking lot to my apartment complex, and to my left is a is a is a garbage dumpster. Uh, just started walking by it, looking at the uh, junk food that I bought. Finally, got up the gumption, just walk on over and chuck the shit. So, but on the downside, though, um, I basically wasted seven dollars. So. I wish I would stop doing that. But um, I basically wasted seven dollars. I mean, basically it's a seven dollar write-off. You know, so but as it is right now, um I I don't always succeed at this, especially when I'm at work, when you know the the junk food's staring at me right in the face, and plus new types of junk foods coming in almost daily. Uh but but yeah, my main junk food of choice is peanut butter M&M's. Um, for a time, um, I actually kicked it. I was actually um, substituting red grapes for them, but nope. I'm uh, back on them again. So. So yeah, it just. I just, I just, I, I just thought I'd toss that out there just make of that what you will but yeah it's an it's an ongoing battle and no I don't I don't want to be complete 100% completely rid of junk you know junk food and not not eating it at all ever again or anything like that but you know I sure as hell don't want to be eating as much as I am now so proud to fly the blue flag um Alter Beach. So I wonder how long this has been going on. Oh, about halfway. Yeah, it's. I have to hotkey it. Like I said, I can't. Uh, I can't click anything on the bottom. Oh, there it goes. So I've got a my uh, my mouse seems to be a bit out of whack then, cause my mouse is like yeah it's like underneath the pause symbol. Otherwise, um, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good. Um, I've said all the things I wanted to say, so. But, but yeah, um, but otherwise, hey, thanks for, um, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. Always do. And, um, this will be my last cast for the week. So, my work week has started up, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, that, those are the days I will be working, so. You won't be hearing from me again until Sunday morning. So, well, excuse me. But until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody, and see you all next time. Bye for now.